Hello ladies and gentle dudes, this is Southern Irish ND. Welcome to my channel, welcome to this video of myself, or of my playing Caitlyn. Uh, I'm gonna go a little unorthodox here, this is uh, not a live commentary. Um, what I'm gonna do here is instead uh, do a play-by-play -play guide uh, for Caitlyn slash ADC in general. Because um, I've noticed that a lot of people have asked me for tips. And um, I think I can help a few of you out. So I will do my best to make this entertaining and educational. Educational in the sense that it is strictly for entertainment purposes. So pretty general normal start here. Gangplank is up top. Um, I think he's up against an Akali. Maybe not. I think I think their Akali is going mid. I, I don't quite remember. But um, normal start. Defending blue. Uh, Zenza wanting me to carry him, I probably won't be able to. Um, and Gangplank is not watching red. Normally the top laner would sit in the uh, tri bush and defend the red. If if you're on the purple side, that is. Well, I got the colorblind mode on, so it's the purple side. Um, and I started out with the Dorn's Blade because, one, every five attacks heals five HP. I know it's not a lot, but every 30 is a health pod, so you figure if you stay around for 90 CS, that's buying 3 health pods. Plus you get extra damage and extra health. Um, so I, I like to start with it, even if my support does not have a heal. Right here, I make the mistake of uh, taking one of the wolves, I believe. Yep, right there. I did not think I'd be able to one-shot that blue wolf. Um, I underestim underestimated my damage there. So, normal start, auto attack blue as much as we can, and yeah, he, uh, I mean, I, I would have been fine giving him a smite list because we do plenty of damage, but um, I guess he just wanted to uh, not do that. Anyway, so I see Draven here, I do not see their Nami, so I Q here instead because I don't want to jump in and get stunned, and I focus on my CS, and I see that Thresh is coming in. So I go on with him, yep, and Nami is knocked back out of the brush. And uh, the Thresh is good, so he wards their side of the brush. Um, brush control is huge in, uh, especially bot lane, because that, that can either deny you farms or give you farms. Um, good thing is, uh, they counter jungle, or our team counter jungles, and gets a first blood there. And Thresh is doing a very good job of harassing here, and he almost lands that. Um, we probably could have gotten a kill there, and Draven just charges in and takes a free shot there. Um, I guess a general tip here is, if you see them going in for a last hit like that, um, try to punish him if you're, you know, but don't, try not to overextend. I probably don't do the best job at it, because I, yeah. And try not to miss on CS as you're uh, harassing the enemy as well. With Caitlyn, you have a lot of zoning power because of your range, especially early game. So, um, take advantage of that. Uh, traps as well, they're really nice. I would probably lay them down wherever his axes lie down, but he's not using them often. He doesn't use them often in this game, so I don't get to do that. But, um, traps are generally very good for zoning, whether you're pushing or being pushed. Wherever they're going to have to land to last hit, put a trap down, they'll run into it. And you get a free auto attack, or maybe even a Q on there, so it's, it's really nice. So... Yeah, I see. Farming under the tower, not doing the best job in the world right now, but I'm doing okay. I dodge his little slow, he gets a free poke in the back. And I move back a little bit because I know Nami has that heal thing that bounces uh, in between like allies and enemies. Thresh is good enough to put a, uh, like a lantern ward there so that uh, we know where they are. Draven sticks around. Uh, I thought I got a free shot in there, but that's fine. Put a trap there, because if they keep pushing, they'll probably come this way. I miss a CS there, poking him. Um, probably it wasn't worth worth it, but... And I'm missing a bunch of CS, because I can't time anything right, but he lands a great initiate right there, and I make the mistake of uh, eating out of there. Um, that, that, that should have been a kill for us. 
but I eat out thinking that she was going to stun, and then uh, I got slowed by Draven, so I didn't get to do as much damage. I got an auto attack with the passive up and a Q up as well. But all in all, that was a good trade, and Thresh throughout the game almost lands all these grabs. I see them coming in because Thresh was stunned, and Draven takes a free Q poke there. And um, you see that in the minimap, that Thresh has warded their tri-brush because we have pushed pretty far. So um, if you are playing support, or if you are playing ADC and your support is not warding the correct AD areas, make sure you let your support know. Or if you are playing support, if you're pushed, make sure to ward the uh, tri-brush if you are um, playing as the purple team, or the top team, whatever it is. That was almost a land as, well. land as well. I started Ignite Flash, so Draven would have been dead for sure. And um, I see Nocturne come here. Thresh pings me to get back. Which I do. Our ward's almost about to run out, so I'm a little cautious here. But So I queue in here, get, both, get the big minion and the caster minion there. Thresh is so close with his uh, grabs th throughout this entire game. It's uh, it's almost disappointing. I probably got could have gotten really fed, but he does a very good job as a support. He's good at zoning. Um, he wards properly. Now the problem is that we are out of wards, but Nocturne knew that that was warded because Thresh tried to land the grab on him, so he probably won't be back for gank or gank for a while. The problem is that, um, you know, they might do one of those tricks where they act like they go back and then come back in case the ward has run out. Um, good supports and good AD carries, unlike me, will keep track of uh, the ward timer. Because I'm sure they saw Thresh put a ward there. So Thresh is just picking up souls. I'm playing cautiously, but Nocturne is top, or I mean Nocturne is mid. So I am relatively safe here. Irelia is missing though. I'm guessing she went back to base after killing Gangplank after pushing the or pushing her lane. So what I do here is play relatively aggressively and uh, keep auto attacking when I can to keep on pushing the lane. So they. They have the feeling that, you know, Thresh might be still here with me. It's it's, it's a nice trick if if uh, they don't have stuff warded. Because we had a pink in the bottom brush, or their bottom brush. We had a pink in there, so um, we cleared their wards. And uh, they have no idea if Thresh is still in there or not. But since Thresh isn't here, but he is coming back now. So I thought about going back, but I have half mana and half health. So I stick around. I'm checking the CS here. I'm up ahead by 15. And he's forced to farm under the tower right now because I pushed it. I had no idea that she was coming here. But she did absolutely crap for damage and I wasted my ult. I thought she was going to dash out of here. But she stuck around for some reason. Um, so I'm out of mana. That's fine though. Got a free kill out of it. I can go back and buy awesome stuff. And Thresh does a good job of warding the dragon. Pinking it, taking out their ward. Um, when I come back, if I am ahead, I will start with a BF sword. I will, I will try to get a BF sword as soon as I can. If I don't have enough for a BF sword, I go for sustain with the Vampiric Scepter. And, uh, if they're stacking health, I would, uh, turn that Vampiric Scepter and, uh, get a Cutlass. So that I can build Blade of the Rune King. Um, I don't believe I do that in this game, though. So they're pushing the lane because I'm not here, but I believe I I make it in time to get get all the experience here. So now with the BF sword, we can trade and do an absurd amount of damage. And they can't really do anything about it. My guess is that they went back. Or, well, I thought they went back, and then I realized they went. They didn't go back because we had a ward there because of Thresh, thankfully. Anyways. And Draven ults here for no reason. So, yeah, what I just said there, uh, make sure... Um, yeah, map awareness is a huge thing. 
I uh, I don't I don't do the best at it. I'm st it's something that I'm still working on. Um, so what I try to do now here is try to bait them into attacking me, going all in. But I do too much damage, so they're not going to try to engage. I was gonna try to bait Nami stun and maybe even jump into it, but that wasn't gonna happen. So now I go to the top because Zin Zhao's up top. This might be a giveaway, as in like. Hey, come up here so Zen Zhao can come gank. But that's fine. She misses the uh what's gonna call it? The stun. I put a cupcake down to see if she would flash into it. She didn't. I barely dodged that. Now here I screwed up my E, so I take way too much tower damage. Um I aimed it to the point where I ran into the tree instead of keep going back away from the tower range. And uh I should have done EQ faster as well. I see a Kali coming here, and I tell my t team to back off. Because Nocturne's coming in as well. But Nocturne, I think he gets there too late. Yeah. So, we have no idea where their team is. Aurelia is going bot to help. Uh, I guess not. I, I guess I don't remember this game too well. I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, heading back to lane. I have about 70 CS, and we're close to 12 minutes in. Uh, it's not too shabby. I definitely miss a lot that I should not have. Um, what I noticed uh, that helps with CS is if you just... Oh, what do you call it? Try not to focus too much on harass, and actually focus on CS. Unless they try to force trades with you, um, if you want to work on CSing, just um, focus on the CS. But like here, Draven comes in for no reason, and I dodge her thingy with my... I don't know where this analysis is going, I'm not very good at this. Uh, I should probably should have watched the video before I did this, but yeah. So we're pushed, um, we have no vision of the river. So I wait for Thresh to uh, ward. And then I poke at Draven a little bit. But Nami has a pink. So the Tribush is no longer warded, but we do have Dragon warded now. She slows me. I EQ though. Um, Nami takes a ton of damage, but Draven did not take the uh, Q to the face. Which would have been nice. But it didn't happen. He steps on a cupcake. I get a free shot on him. Shields completely misses. I see a Kali coming, and I feel like this is a bad news bears thing, but I EQ out of there. Thresh lands a grab on a Kali. Nicely done. I get a few auto attacks, and then I believe I do a Q, and then an auto attacking killer. And I do way too much damage for them to dive me, plus a Kali jumped in. Now I see that Gangplank has his ultimate up. Um, he could ult to help Akali, and then I could go in to help out as well because of that, you know, large area CC, or slow. Well, I guess slow is CC. But he doesn't do that, so I hug the tower, especially with Nocturne's ult up. I did not want to get jumped on because that would have been a ton of gold for them. With that, I push the lane and uh, head back. So I'm, I'm 31 CS ahead of Draven. I'm kills ahead of Draven as well. So I have a BT and a Berserker Greaves as well. So at this rate, we're probably going to take the tower pretty soon. Because we're dominating and we should go help out other lanes. Now this is funny. Xin Zhao does this. He keeps auto-attacking, auto-attacking, and then he does that. He uses his ult at nothing. Uh, I got a kick out of that. Hopefully you guys did too. That's probably the funniest thing that's going to happen in this video. No, I'm sure funnier things happen. Hopefully. Hopefully, guys. There's, I, I'm going to keep it a little interesting and say I have no idea if it's going to get funnier or not. Because, you know, for suspense. Not because I really don't know, but for suspense. Although that Draven ult, random Draven ult, was pretty funny too. They're completely zoned because I do too much damage and they can't do anything about it. Go in. Ah... Uh, See, that was a really nice stun by Nami, because um, had she not stunned Thresh, 
Well, I, it was purely coincidental that, or accidental, that uh, Thrush got stunned there, but... And I go up here to help out in case they engage. I Q, hit both of them, Draven's axes miss. And then I EQ right there, and Draven takes a ton of damage. I would have ulted were it not for Nami. It would have been a waste of ult, and I see Zin's out coming, so I figure my ult will be more useful once once we dive, after I clear this wave. Now, Thresh throws a uh, lantern there so that he could jump on it, but no, he just he just sits there. Um, so, another tip I can give you guys is that when you're playing with the support, or you know, make or if you're doing bot lane, make sure you know what your partner's skills are, um, and don't take tower shots like that. But I put a trap here, thinking they might try to dive. I Q, thinking I can maybe hit somebody. I think I hit Draven right there. Um, so tower's pretty low, and Thresh lands a pretty nice grab here. I get an auto tech, and uh, the Q hits, I believe, Draven and uh, Nocturne. I ult to do a little damage. Gangplank finally ults in. Uh, Zin Zhao's dead, but Akali gets a double kill here because she's Akali and she can. she's so mobile. And once she snowballs, she snowballs really hard. So now three of their teammates are dead. Akali is mid. Uh, Irelia is top. And I, I don't think about this until just now and then realize I should stick around and take his tower because Akali... Their Akali doesn't do that, that much damage, and she probably can't take the mid tower right now. And by the time our teammates get there, they should be able to defend it. So with that in mind, I push bot hard, because Aurelia is pushing top as well. Just keep auto-attacking, auto-attacking. Yeah, and we get the tower. Thresh tries to land a grab. That was a mistake, and you'll see why later. Um, got a little too cocky. I mean, yeah, we probably could have gone in on Nocturne, but you see Draven coming, right? I put a trap there, which delays his uh, death for a little bit. And then Nami's here too, though. So I put another trap here, delay Nocturne a bit, but I have to get out of there because Draven's there and Nami's there and Nocturne's there. And uh, I'm relatively certain that Nocturne did have his ult up, and I do not have cleanse, and I'm low on mana. So I had to go back. Um... If I had cleanse, I may have stuck around and done a few auto attacks, maybe to scare him off, because I'd probably do a good bit of damage because I'm so fed. But had I died, I would have given a ton of, I would have given them ton of gold. So knowing that I'm back, Draven is pushing bot really hard. Um, he rushed the bloodthirster. I am like 40 farm ahead of him. Luckily enough, I have Berserker's Greaves, and uh, I can walk back fast enough so that this tower does not go down. I get slowed, but I do land a Q on a bunch of minions, and Nami Stun is worthless to me. Or it does, it's, it's really worthless, because it doesn't do any damage and all that good stuff. I see Nami's going mid, so I'm pretty safe right now. Nope. I guess she was just taking out the Dragon more. So I stick around, stick around, do a little poke. And then, uh, yeah. I knew Nami would come. Had she uh, tried to stun me, I, w I probably would have dodged it just by walking. But I did have my flash, so I wasn't too worried about it. Given that I just saw Draven in the tri bush, and my teammates are charging in right now, that Akali could get caught. So I ping her to go back. Um, so map awareness is huge. Thresh is pinging Dragon, so what I do is go with Thresh so he can ward this brush. And then I put a Cupcake down so that uh, we have additional CC there. But I see Nami sitting here, so she must know we're here. Um, I was hoping that he would pull out the uh, Dragon a little more, but... But two of our teammates are up top, one of our teammates are dead. So it's a little risky right now if we do get caught here. I try to poke at the Dragon a little bit. Um, and the only reason they know that, you know, we're at Dragon is because they put a pink here earlier. And I try to get auto attack here, but, uh, you know, there's, there's really no point because Akali could just come around and, uh, well, probably burst me down. 
So Thresh, smart enough, puts the ward in the uh, cave. And Akali and uh, Zinzao push top really hard. And their silly little Akali decides, hey, I'm going to overextend and uh, try to take the mid tower by myself. So I just auto attack her a few times. I ult, giving me vision of her. And uh, so I think she goes top here. I was worried that she might come around like one of those tricks like, hey, I'm going to run away this way and then turn around and go this way, actually. You know, the place where you guys used to be. But no, she doesn't do that. So she gets destroyed. Well, I probably would have killed her anyways, but that happens. Draven is pushing bot. There's no way I can get there in time to take it. So we're going to trade towers and uh, we push mid hard. Nocturne's ults up, but there's three of us here, so we're fine here. But Nocturne, I believe, was going for a Kali. So, yeah. Now, I see that Draven went back to base. Nocturne is dead. Um, Nami and Aurelia are top, so we can definitely take drag. So I ping my team to target Dragon, and they're on their way to help me. So whenever you can, um, if you s see the opportunity to, to take an objective, like a tower or a Dragon or... You know, even a blue buff or a red buff, do it. Um, but make sure it's safe, though. I, I think they they still had a pink there, but they couldn't do anything about it because they were too far away, and Draven went back to base, and uh, Aurelia was top by herself. And uh, had they engaged, they would have died. So farming's much easier now because I do an absurd amount of damage, so I just auto-attack. That is a very nice perk. So, mid tower needs help. I don't want to get caught here, so I don't go through the wolves here. I go through the back because uh, if I do get caught, again, that's a lot of gold for the enemy team. So, Irelia kills in Zhao. Um, we don't know where the rest of their team is, so I stick around mid in case they try to push it hard, but I see Thresh getting poked here. So I go around from the back to help out. Again, I stay behind my team because I am the ADC and I do a lot of damage. Cupcake down to give us vision. And uh, Akali's going top and she's not really much of a threat so I stay away from her. And I think our Akali could take her out anyways. So here, instead of sticking with my team, I decide I'm going to get that CS. So I see that they're coming in. I have a feeling, I had a feeling that they wanted me really bad. But I didn't care. I wanted to bait them into the tower if I could. Because um, I was wondering if they had vision or not. So I sit here, um, get a good bit of farm, and my team scares them away. But Nocturne does get caught here, thanks to Thresh. So Thresh gets killed, and uh, the other enemies are pushed way back. With that, I get more farm top. And uh, make sure whenever you get a chance, you push your lane. So this, okay, so the enemy team decided to derp and stick around here. Thresh almost lands his grab, not really, but Akali decides to go around this way and get killed. So this Akali is bad from the from the get go. Um, from the get go, like that that dive at I don't remember what level she was, or that one man one v two gank that she tried to perform that completely failed. So essentially, by uh, you know getting killed there, they they gave up Baron. I mean, we're way ahead in objective and kills and farm, but they probably could have contested this Baron to some degree. So we get Baron, and uh, I head back to base because I have 3k gold. And then uh, I pick up Phantom Dancer. So what I normally do is get either Bloodthirster, or if I'm behind, I go for Infinity Edge. But I do build Vampiric Scepter always. Um, after I have my main damage item, whether it's Bloodthirster... Oh, well, after I get my first main damage item, whether it's Bloodthirster or Infinity Edge, um, I normally rush Phantom Dancer. Unless we're really behind, and... Um, we need to get Static Shiv so that I can push harder. Unless I'm Trist or something. If I'm Trist, I'm just getting Phantom Dancer. Because there's really no need to get Static Shiv on Trist because of the 
ridiculous auto attack speed and her E. Ooh, my throat's starting to hurt a little bit. That sounded a little wrong. Okay, so Callie, I think, is trying to bait us here. So I put a trap there in case they, in case one of them tries to step on it. So Zen Zhao leads the charge here because he is tankier. See, Draven's nearby. And then uh, there's Nocturne. He gets caught because he got split from his team and he decided to stick around too much. Clearly the tower wasn't going to save him. I put a trap there in case somebody comes from the back. But I see Thresh going in here, taking a good bit of poke. I see Relia coming, so I'm a little worried. So I come around here from the back. But Akali comes out of nowhere, so I almost get killed here. So there was no peel for me there because everybody just wanted kills. But that's okay, we're so far ahead that I could just auto attack a Akali and destroy her. So with that, they surrender. Um, so hopefully that, you know, this, this served as a guide of some sort and help you guys out a little bit. Uh, but anyways, if, let me know if you guys like this. Leave your comments, like, and subscribe. So, uh, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.